In this video, we're going to introduce the normal distribution. We're going to talk about what the normal distribution is, and we're also going to talk about the characteristics of the normal distribution. To help you understand what the normal distribution is all about, I have some graphs that we're going to talk about. These are column graphs. When we look at the column graph at right, you'll notice that most men have a shoe size of 10. From this point, as you move to the right, or as the shoe size increases, you'll notice that the columns decrease in size as well. When you get to size 13 shoes, there are not many men with that size shoe. We also see the same thing as we move to the left of the 10. As the shoe size decreases, the columns decrease in size as well. Whenever we see a graph that peaks in the middle like this and then seems to taper off as you go to the right and taper off as you go to the left, we say that this is a normally distributed graph. You may be wondering why I have a picture of a bell. Well, the reason is because these graphs have a bell shape to them. And when we talk about normally distributed data, we often talk about how it has a bell-shaped curve. So why is normally distributed data useful? Why is it useful when you get this bell-shaped curve? Well, first of all, these bell-shaped curves seem to occur very regularly in real-life situations. If you ever gather data and graph it and get this bell-shaped curve, you should be really happy. Data that is normally distributed like this is really useful when you want to make predictions or come up with conclusions. One thing I need to point out is that normally distributed data needs to be somewhat symmetrical. This graph here on the left, which represents restaurant ratings, is a great example of normally distributed data. And what makes it such a good example is it's perfectly symmetrical. If I draw a line right down the middle here, you will notice that the left side is perfectly symmetrical to the right side. Now in real life situations, you're not going to have perfectly symmetrical graphs. If we look at the graph at right, it's somewhat symmetrical, but it's not perfectly symmetrical. Now that's okay, it's okay that it's not perfectly symmetrical, but for it to be normally distributed, it needs to be at least somewhat symmetrical. A really good example of a normal distribution are exams. And I've made up a graph here which represents the exam results for the HSC Standard Maths course. Now I need to point out that these results are made up. I would have loved to have found the actual results, but I couldn't. But if I had found the actual results from the last HSC exam, it would look something like this. It would have this bell shape. We can see that most students got between 40 and 50% in their exams. As you move to the right, or as the results increase in value, you get less and less students. So not many students got 90 to 100%. And also when you move to the left, you notice that not many students got 0 to 10%. Now the peak of the curve needs to be at the center. And when we say that, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, well, the center for this graph would have to be 50%, because 50% is halfway between 0 and 100. And in this particular case, the center is around about 50%. But it doesn't always need to be that way. Here's an example of one where the center, where the peak is, is actually probably around the 65% mark. We can see the reason this has happened is because nobody got between 0 and 30%. So our center is halfway between 30 and 100%, which is 65%. We're going to conclude by talking about the characteristics of a normal distribution. We're basically going to revise everything we've learned. The first dot point says that most of the data is located at the center 
and decreases as you go toward the tail. So whenever we look at our bell curves, the center is the peak. And we see that most of our data is located at this point. Most people have a size 10 shoe for the men. And then as we went to the right towards our tails or to the left towards our tails, we noticed that it decreased. It seemed to taper off at either end. The next dot point is that it's in the shape of a bell. We noticed that when data is normally distributed, it makes a bell shape. The third dot point, which we haven't discussed yet, is that the mean, the median, and the mode are all equal. If we look at the graph on the left, the mean, the median, and the mode are all equal. They're not just equal, they also represent the peak of our graph. Notice that the mean, median, and mode are three. And if I draw a line at this point, this is actually our axis of symmetry. When we look at the second graph, the mean, median, and mode are not quite equal this time. The median and mode are equal, but the mean is slightly different. And that will occur very often. And the reason for this is this graph is not perfectly symmetrical. So only when they're perfectly symmetrical, you'll find that they'll be exactly the same. And it's quite fine if the mean is a little off. Once again, if I draw a line where my mean, median, and mode are basically equal, about 10, you'll notice that the graph is symmetrical on both sides of this line. That brings us to our fourth dot point, which just says that it is symmetrical about the mean. Our mean is basically where we drew our two red lines before, and we can see that the graph is symmetrical on both sides of this axis. Anyway, that concludes our video introducing the normal distribution. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.